morning, everyone. How are you? Uh, how are you doing today? Good. Outside is too hot. We are sweating a lot, but thank God it's cool in here. Why don't you all stand up and exchange greetings as usual? Smile to your friends and say hello. How are you doing? Please, all of you, stand up. Yeah. Okay, thank you. We give praise and thanks to God for this another opportunity. I'm standing here to share the word of God from the book of Matthew, the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 7, verses 24 to 27. And my, the title says, The Wise Builder and the Foolish Builder. Let's read the title all together. Yeah, there are two different kinds of builders, and this is a parable Jesus used to teach some truth about the kingdom of God, and we're going to share that together today. Uh, as usual, first let's read the Bible verse together, and then we will continue to my sermon. Let's start. One, two. Therefore, everyone who hears these words of mine and put them into practice is like a wise man who built his house on the rock. The rain came down, the streams rose, and the winds blew and beat against the house. Yet it did not fall because it had its foundation on the rock. But everyone who hears these words of mine and does not put them into practices like a foolish man who built his house on sand. The rain came down, the streams rose, and the winds blew and beat against that house, and it fell with a great crash. Um, how many of you know this house? Uh, this is a very huge Le Lego house, and uh, I think it's found in uh, Denmark. Um, do you like Lego? Um, let me see, how many of you are a big fan of Lego? Wow. Yes, we even have adult fans of Legos, including me. But, you know, it demands a lot of patience. Now, this one is a Lego house. Um, there are many experience zones, uh, zones that you can see on the picture, and the colors are also not the same. Different colors represent different kinds of activities. So when you go there with your family, with your friends, or maybe alone, you have to know which color represents what kind of special activities. So for example, the red one there at the back, it is a creative zone. When you want to enhance your creativity, you will go there. And the blue is focusing on the cognitive, and the green is for social interaction, and the yellow is for emotional experiences. Can you guess how many pieces of Legos could be found there? More than two millions of Lego bricks. It's amazing. You can build, you can build anything you want from your creativity or even following manuals. So I told you some people, adults, are a big fan of Lego. And you know this man? This man is a very famous YouTuber. He built a very huge Lego house and he's enjoying staying inside and looking to, through the window. And you can build any kind of structure actually uh, following your own creativity. What kind of constructions did you make uh, from Lego? Like some of you said you like Lego, right? What did you construct? Like what? Houses? Spaceship. Okay, good. Car? Uh huh. I want a giant dolphin. Okay, giant dolphin. Did you try? Not yet. Not yet. In the future. Okay, you small. Okay. I hope you will one day also construct a huge dolphin. Okay. That's his wish. <laughs> good luck. And uh, some people. Okay, over there. What?
Okay, castle. Yeah, good. He used Lego to build a castle. How about you? Horse. Horse? Wow, that's amazing. There are different kinds of structures that you can make. Cars and guns and jets, a lot of different things. And also, I think, uh, you, see, you see here, some students, some children, they built about 800 students, kids, aged between 5 to 13. They built a huge, largest Lego BMW X1. Uh, not two. One, two. Um, maybe we can open the door. <laughs> About 800 kids. Actually, you cannot capture all of them at a time in one picture. We see some of them here. And guess what? Can you guess how many pieces of Legos did they use here? 156,000 Legos. And it took them four days. It was on display. Do you want to par participate in this kind of project? Wow. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Some said no. Some said yes. I know. And also, there is a Legoland in Korea. Oh, I know there. I know there. Okay. How many of you have been there? Okay. Quite a number of you. This was, I think, it was inaugurated 2022. And I heard this is uh, maybe the first largest, I'm not quite sure, maybe there is also a huge Legoland in Malaysia. It could be the first or the second. Um, it covers 280,000 square meter. It's really big. It is, I think, found in Chuncheon. And uh, I'm pretty sure we all know this foundation when we build Lego, right? Especially if you want to build a huge construct like a big house or something else, like maybe the dolphin you mentioned, you need this kind of foundation. If you do not have this foundation, especially if you are trying to build a house, the house will not be strong enough to last longer. All of you, please say, perfect foundation. That's what you need in order for you to build a strong construct using Legos. You need to have foundations. In our scripture reading today, Jesus Christ was talking about two different builders. One is wise builder and the other one is foolish builder. But what made them wise or foolish? It is their choice of the foundation they built the house on. Jesus said uh, obedience is the foundation of Christian life. That's what he said. Unless you listen to the very word that I am telling you and you put them into practice, you are building on very fragile background. Obedience is like a solid foundation for our Christian life. In the story we heard, Jesus said, those who listen to my word and put them into practice in their everyday life, they are compared with wise people. And when Jesus said, obey my word, at least there are three things that we needed to consider when it comes to obedience. First, we need to obey the Word of God. All of you, please say the Word of God. The word of God. That's the first one. And second, we need to obey the authority, the authority of the Lord. Of course, the Word has the authority of God. And we need to always respect and obey that too. And then the third one is the will of God. These three things are intertwined together. The Word of God has the authority of God, and it also reveals the will of God. Then as Christians, do you know why Jesus told this parable to the disciples? It is because there are lots of people who just listen to the word of God, and they think they have fulfilled every Christian requirement simply by listening the word of God. That's why James, he said, do not deceive yourself. 
or yourselves by only listening to the Word of God. There are so many people, thousands and millions of people who read the Word of God, who listen to sermons and um, uh, teachings in the church, but the thing is that it is not that easy to put them in practice. And Jesus wanted to give an emphasis on that. Without we obeying God, we cannot have a solid foundation in our Christian life. Therefore, he said, obey the word of God. And then we say here, obeying the word of God is also full submission. Full, sometimes we submit to God partially. There are some parts of our life that we want to give to God, and there are some parts of our life we want to spare. But we say here, we have to willingly and completely surrender, submit our life to God and obey, and that serves us as a foundation. Jesus was comparing the two people. The first one, those who apply the word of God, they are compared to a wise builder who builds his house or her house on the rock. And then Jesus again, he compared those who hear the word of God and immediately forget. Those who are not willing to obey, they are compared to foolish builders. As I've already told you, the difference between these two different kinds of people is their choice to build their house. You can imagine the process of building will be very much different when someone chooses to build his house on the sand and other people when they try to uh, build their house on the rock. The process is very demanding. But the thing is like both houses will be tried with the same kinds of challenges. In the parable Jesus said, the wiser person built on the rock. Building a house on the rock is not easy. Why? Why do you think it's not easy to build a house? Huh? It's, it's not easy to dig in, right? Because the rock is hard. What else? It takes time, right? Okay, you want to say something? Okay. <laughs> what else? Why it is hard to build a house or construct anything on a rock? It takes time. Uh huh. Break the rock? Mm hmm. Yeah, you need to break the rock, and that needs a lot of effort, right? And it takes time. It's demanding anyway. It needs determination. It needs patience. And unless you put some kind of imagination thinking the benefit that's coming in the future, it will be very much trying actually to build a house on a rock. You, you have to remember that when Jesus was telling this parable, there was no any sort of machine that we wanted, that we used to drill a rock. If they have to build a house on a rock, they have to dig in manually, physically. It was very demanding. And the second one is building a house on the sand. I think you have the experience going to the beach and build a castle or playing with the sand. You know how it's very easy to dig in, right? It's very easy. Even with your hand, you can dig in. So if you want to build a house on the sand, it doesn't need as much as effort as it requires when we are building a house on a rock. Overnight, actually, you can build a huge house because it doesn't need lots of effort. It is fun. It goes very fast. It's very easy. And it's very smooth. The problem is when the temptation, when the trial, when the challenges are coming. Jesus mentioned three challenges related to the parable. One, there was a heavy rain. Two, there was a storm. And three, because of the storm and the rain, there was a flood. These are some of the examples that the houses faced as a challenge. But our challenges as human beings might be not rain, storm, or flood. 
Of course, literally, these are also challenges for many people around the world because of hurricane and typhoon, as you know, flood. It's happening all the time, even in Korea, during the rainy season, some places, uh, lower places and mountain sides, they have their own challenges. We know that. We, keep, we need to keep them praying, uh, pray for them. But this is a parable, and the uh, challenges that we are facing in our life might not be exactly related with the rainstorm or flood. But anyway, what Jesus is saying is that human beings, they have their own challenges in life. They will be tried. There is something that will test, test their uh, life. There's a life test. What is the problem now? The house that is built on a rock and the house that is built on the sand will have no same kind of consequences when it comes to this challenge. The house that's built on a rock, it was able to, to withstand all kinds of challenges it was facing. Why? Because it was built on the rock. And the house that was built on the sand, it was not able to stand the challenges. Why? Because it doesn't have a firm foundation. And the consequence, the result is not the same. The first one, withstand. Withstands any challenge. And the second one collapses because it, it doesn't have the foundation. The problem is the foundation. Now we have to just think a little bit about our own life. Our faith. What is the foundation of our faith? The sermons, the readings, the scripture readings, the sermons that we hear, and uh, the devotional books that we are reading, or any other spiritual things that we are learning, biblical things, that what we hear from God, are we putting them into practice? I remember once um, I, I had a professor who used to teach me a hermeneutics class. Hermeneutics means the science of interpretation. Uh, and that guy was a senior man. And I really liked him, all students liked him. He teaches very well. And then on the last day of the class, we had a farewell party and then I had a, a short time to chat with him. And then I just wanted to take that advantage to ask him some advice. And then I asked him as a young man, I was in a theology school, so as a young man who is anticipating to be a pastor, what practical advices do you have for me? And then that man, he said, I see most of the students here, they study very hard, they know the word, they memorize, they recite, it's very good, I'm very impressed. Actually, he came from US and this happened in Ethiopia. And then he said, especially the fact that you remember the Bible, I was very impressed, but I have one practical advice. Guess what? He said, as much as you are taking time and studying the Bible, I really advise you also to have a plan, to have a schedule, where you will practically practice the Word of God. So that means as I'm having my quiet time in my house, as I'm scheduling that, I need to also schedule to practice that. If I read the Bible verse that says, love your neighbor, I study that one. And then again, I have to plan, okay, now it's time to practice that. I have to go out and love my neighbors practically. I think that was really very helpful for me as a young person. What does James say? Let's read it all together here. Do not merely listen to the word and so deceive yourself. Do what it says. Anyone who listens to the word but does not do what it says is like someone who looks at his face in a mirror and after looking at himself goes away and immediately forgets what he looks like. But whoever looks intently into the perfect law and gives freedom and continues in it, not forgetting what they have heard, but do it. They will be blessed in. How many times a day do you see yourself on a mirror? At least one time, two times, maybe some people 10 times or more than that. Thanks to uh, Korean <laughs> uh, buildings we have uh, everywhere, right? But if you look to a mirror, 
and you see something on your face, then what will you do? You'll just look and say, oh, okay, there's something on my face, and then you just go? Nobody will do that, right? The very purpose that we look to the mirror is to fix anything that is inappropriate on our face, on our body, right? It's the same thing. It says, do what it says. Do what the Word of God says. That is being practical. Let me say two things and I'll finish. In education, there are people who focus a lot on theory and there are people who practice a lot on practice. Theoreticians and practitioners. Uh, in fact, in education, we say we have to have them both together. Okay? We are not only teaching theory, we also need to teach people to practice what they learn. And Christian education is the same thing. We are not just reading the Word of God, listening to sermons, simply for mental luxury, in order to just satisfy our intellect. Spiritual things is practical. We need to practice them every day, every moment. So the lesson today and the parable that we have seen, we need to build our spiritual life on a solid Christian ground that is obedience that comes from willing submission. Amen? Let us pray.